perfect. Okay, home. <laughs> you recording? Okay. All right, welcome to Stream Pocket, everybody. This is uh, my second video on the channel. And what I wanted to show you today is my Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera rig. This is uh, years of research. I've had the camera for three years now. Uh, I've watched all the YouTube videos from all the, all the greats out there. And uh, I've done a lot of research and trial and error on what actually works and what doesn't work. And I've put together the ultimate kit. This is all you'll ever need for short films. Uh, this is Netflix certified live streaming, which I do a lot of. So this is a camera rig that will work both for live video and for video. Uh, start up right off the bat. This is the four, Micro Four Thirds sensor. So I'm using a Metabone Speed Booster. This is uh, specifically made for the Pocket 4K. This, this Speed Booster will only work on this camera and it turns it into a Super 35 like camera. The lenses I use, my, name, my main lens is the Sigma 18-35, the Sigma Art 18-35, it's an f1.8. I have the Tokina 11-16, which is a 2.8. And I have the Rokinon 85mm Cine lens, this is Cine DS. And then this is the Helios 442, it's a vintage lens. You got these four lenses, is all you're ever going to need for this camera. These, are, these work well together and they mix together and it's a beautiful video after. So first thing you want to do is mount your cage. I use the full cage, all small rig components, okay? Um, the only thing Tilta I have is the mat box, but for, for, for my tripod rig while live streaming or doing video, I use the full cage. I have a half cage if I need to rig this up on a gimbal. The gimbal rig video will be coming at a later date. I'm going to show you how to hook this up to the only rig it really works on, which is the Zhuin Crane 3 Lab. Okay, it, it handles the weight, and if you want to get the uh, the 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 Tekina 11 to 16 on there, it's it's the only way to go. The Zhuin Crane. Okay, so first off the bat, we're going to get the full cage on, and to do that, I have my small rig multi tool here. Okay. This is great because it, it, mo all small rig components will have the Allen keys magnet magnetized inside of them. The handles have Allen keys. Everything has Allen keys. But you get this tool. It's an all-in-one. -er. So well, this is a great. The full cage is great because I can mount it on the top and bottom, right? So you got mounting points here and at the and at the top. Lens forward. So the first thing I actually do when I, when I open the Blackmagic camera is rip off the rubber tabs on the side. You don't need them and they're just going to get in your way. And you can put them back in later if you want. Rip those out, leave it exposed, all good. Now the bottom of the cage has a funky like, uh, you know, it's got two pins and then your screw. So that will secure your bottom on. Get the bottom in. I love that. A lot of mounting, a lot of mounting points on these cages. They're beautiful, but you can see that it doesn't twist. Uh, it's got the extra screw that goes in the top, but beware, there's a space here. Okay, you don't want to like drive that top screw in so that the the cage bends, but you just want to snug it in. Okay, you can get these. I get. I just get a pack of small rig screws. Right. I got tons of extra screws. Uh, even my the tool itself, you can put uh, screws in it, right? We'll get the bat, this back in, just enough, just snug it up to, you know, just bef just so that the actual cave doesn't doesn't cave in, right? Just snug it in, and she's good to go, right? Secure in there, fasten at the bottom and then top. Second thing you want to do with this rig. Is get your speed booster on. All right, the Meta Boons. This is uh, specifically made for this camera. If 
you buy a Pocket 4K, you got to budget an extra thousand dollars to get this uh, speed booster. With the speed booster, is better than the Pocket 6K. Okay, uh, you're going to get uh, 4K 60 with this, whereas you whereas you won't with the uh, with the 6K Pro. You get 4K 30 or something like that. Line up your, your red dots, but you can see like this will not work on any other camera other than the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. It's too deep, and if you use other speed boosters that are not for this camera, they're too shallow. Okay, it will not work properly. This is a 0.71 speed booster. Line up that hole, click it in. Okay. Now you'll notice the speed booster has a foot. You can attach to the cage, and that's where this little little guy comes in. When you're mounting it for in studio on a tripod, you mount it upright like this, and you'll have a little lip on the bottom. And there's a reason for that. It's good. Say you're, you're mounting it to a gimbal, you have to flip this, this thing around and it's flush because the gimbal plate is longer, okay? But for our, our small rig attachment for the 504 HD, the quick release plate, you want to mount it this way, which is the right way up. All of these parts I will link in the video, video description. Most of them you can get on Amazon. Uh, in, in Canada we shop at Vistec and in the States BH Photo. You get all this stuff uh, through BH Photo in the, in the US or Vistec in Canada. There we go. That's weird. <laughs> Beautiful. They're not the, they're not different sizes. They're the, these these uh, one the, the screws that um, go to the cage they're the same size. But this side here is got, giving me some issues. It's weird. All right, so we're secure. So that attaches your speed booster to the cage. It's awesome strength there. Now you want to get your quick release plate for your quick release setup. This is. Uh, a uh, small rig attachment. It's got the uh, quick release with a lock and the 15 millimeter carbon fiber rods is what I use. The carbon fiber rods, super light. They're a small rig product as well. And then this is the Manfrotto plate for the 504 HD, uh, the ball head there. Uh, two screws, two fasteners so that it doesn't curve, right, which is gorgeous. Yeah, you can see it's got two screws in here, two fasteners, right? So that does not turn, and you got your rods. Remember, with the small rigs, you can pull these tabs out to move them and then tighten them. So if, it, if they're in the way of something or whatnot, anything small rig, you can just pull them out, put them where you want it, and then tighten or loosen, okay? So let's put that plate on. And again, two screws on this plate. Right, so it also does not stand. Now that you can notice the part that screws the um, speed booster to the cage, it's, it lips up and the quick release plate will just butt right into it. Oop, <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> And they don't have to be super, super tight, guys. Just snug them up. Uh, you don't want to. You don't want your rigging screws to be tight because when you're uh, taking them off, you never know. Like you, it could, it could damage um, something, right? Like the, you could jerk it and what the heck? What is your deal here? Shouldn't be that tight. Hold on, what the hell?
There we go. Beauty. So. Excellent. All right, that's good and tight. Beautiful. So, now we'll mount it to the uh, quick release plate. There's a lock on it right here and uh, like a secondary lock here. So we'll just engage that down, right? And that lock, that'll lock in. Beautiful, like that, okay? Nice and secure, not going nowhere. It's beautiful. This is a custom V-mount plate. I made it with a, with a flat plate, like cheese plate, and then a 15 mil rod adapter. And then this is a V-mount plate that I, I just drilled some holes and um, like I drilled some holes in the plate and fastened it to this cheese plate so that I can have the V-mount lay down flat. Most V-mount adapt like plates are, will have the V-mount up like this, but then it blocks the screen. So I built this custom one so that it'll, it'll lay flat. The rods just need to pick up this back plate. Most of it, most of the build will be in the front with the follow focus and the map box. And so you want to have just, a, just enough on the back to catch your, your plate. And um, uh, you don't want to be sticking out past your lens, but you'll see in a minute. So that's your V-mount uh, V-mount plate, which will power it. I do not use the, the battery that comes with this camera. It won't last very long. Uh, I use 135 watt hour V-mount. And I, spick, I picked this shape one specifically because it has a USB out and another D-tap. The plate has a D-tap, so I can power the camera with this. And if you have a battery in the Canon or in the camera, you can hot swap these batteries after, okay? So this is secure, locked on. There's a lock here if you wanna pull it off, right? Otherwise it just slips in, okay? So we'll use D-tap to power that. Right here, so we got the D-tap, and I, I'll put this D-tap on the plate in case I need to hot swap the battery while shooting. It doesn't, I don't have to unplug the wires or anything like that. You could power a monitor or like servos or something, you know, you got two extra outputs. You got a USB and a D-tap, so you're, you're laughing for power. This battery will power this shooting 4K DCI RAW. Um, for six hours, I, I'll go six hours with this. I when I live stream with this camera and I'm just live streaming, this just this lasts for so long. I charge it once every like couple of weeks almost. It's crazy. This battery is a good option if you don't want to plug it into the wall. Save yourself a cable. You can you can live stream and you'll have enough battery with this. It uh, might be a little pricey, but it's worth it. This is a good setup. All right. So next thing, where are we gonna go with this? Let's put, let's put the lens on. So for, for 90% of the things I do with this camera, I use the Sigma 18 to 35 uh, EF mount. Okay, all these lenses are EF mount, and that's what this speed booster does. It's micro four thirds to EF. So basically what we're gonna do is we'll line up the dots, okay, red dot to red dot. and to the operator side, okay? To release it, there's a release here, okay? Right, it just snaps in. Uh, set the lens to manual focus, okay? Always manual focus. There is no autofocus with this camera, okay? To focus, I use the shape follow focus, or not, yeah, this is the follow focus wheel. The follow focus will go to the right, which is the assistant side of the camera, okay? You just line it up. Make sure your tension is good. Boom, okay. And I like this follow focus because you can set, uh, you can draw on this and erase it, and this this spike moves, right? So you can set your dimensions, your distances, and yeah, 
you can have a you can just pull it properly by the markings, okay? So there we go. That's how the follow focus goes. This is an FLX Gears ring. So this is an aftermarket product specifically for the Sigma 18 to 35, okay? Or an 82 mil lens. This you can buy at flxgears.com. flxgears.com. You can get one of these pretty cheap and they'll and they'll send you focus cards and stuff like that as well with it. Okay, so now moving on, we need a top handle. And and this is the full build. Sometimes I'll strip it ba a little base a little more bare and basic. But again, like the small rig always has the Allen key somewhere, right? Small rig parts are great that way. They're magnetized in there. You always have uh, your, your keys you need, right? For power and uh, storage, I like to use the cable clamp. It's very important. It's very handy so that the wires, cables don't get pulled out accidentally or anything. Um, it's a, it's just peace of mind to have your your cables locked in and secure. So that's another piece to add is this cable clamp. Um, storage. I got this as an adjustable um, holder for your storage media for external drives. You, know, you could use a Samsung T, like a, one of those T220 drives or whatever, the Sam, Samyang, or Samsung story drive. I got the Angel Bird Match Pack. Okay, this is a great kit for this camera. And I love the red. So you can, tell, you can start to see the, the theme. Okay, red, red, okay, Angel Bird. Also inside, I am using the Angel Bird compact card okay it's a compact flash card so it's a kit it comes with the card and the external drive it's beauty i recommend always recording internally to the cfast card and not to the external drive if you record to the external drive you may drop frames okay uh, it's not for high resolution recording uh it's, it'll catch some spillover but other than other than that you just you you want to record internally with this for 4, 4k raw i will uh, show you the menu settings in a minute hold on is that in i think that's in make sure this cable is a custom cable uh it's great look how clean that is right nice short cable i'll link this in the description as well all of this stuff as much of, of it as i can i'll be linking in the the video description if you guys have any questions please leave me a comment down below and i will get back to you as soon as i can now for the monitor, I'm using the Atomos Shinobi. Okay, I do not need a recorder. This will record 10-bit raw internally. So this is for additional analytics and of course for monitoring, okay? I got this uh, cold shoe mount that I like to use. I'll put it on the top handle here. This has got the, this is a small rig cage for the five inch Shinobi. This is the cable clamp that comes with the cage. And I have this swivel. It's a 360 degree swivel for HDMI. I find it very handy, especially when using a gimbal. Okay, pop this in there, tighten it down. And it's also got the extra release on the like lock here. Okay. We'll plug her in. So you put it in the right way. Shoot, I gotta loosen that. Where, where am I? There we go. Okay, I'll tighten them up. going nowhere okay Your storage ca storage cable HDMI ain't going nowhere when I live stream same thing I'll show you my tripod after but yeah same thing I lock it in so you, the cable doesn't get pulled out okay you trip on it or something I don't know but it's just it's nice to have that secure you're not going to wear out your HDMI port it's very important I have other attachments for running a gimbal some tricks but I'll, I'll have to show you that on the next video. That will be the gimbal, uh, the Zhu and Crane gimbal rig with the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. There's some tricks you're gonna wanna know for that. 
And then from here, <clears throat> I can attach my side handle. Totally optional. I like to have some extra grips, but uh, the, this also uh, has a cold shoe mount and some screws on the top as well to make it handy. You, when you first buy this, you're going to have to move the uh, handle up or down. Okay, I, It's obviously up right now. It's not in the way of any cables. I can access my power, my HDMI, storage cable, no problem. Uh, when you're running audio, I run the Ceremonic Blink 300 Pro and you literally put your transceiver, you can put it right here on top of that handle. Okay, and then plug it in to your microphone jack right there and you got wireless audio. Okay, you can also put it right here on the back of this handle, you know, and wire it in. But obviously the short cables, you, you're going to want to go there. Uh, this handle is neat. It's a 360, right? It can turn if you need it to. Okay, as well. And then, yeah, you can see the theme, right? Wood, grain, wood, grain. Okay, so we got power. We got monitor the monitor are these are just normal batteries you could power your monitor f with off the v-mount if you had the, the proper dummy i do not have that so i just power it by battery or when i'm here in the studio i have the dummy battery for this monitor that plugs into the wall which is handy it comes with the monitor so there we go that's that now we're going to put the map box this is great because i can put um uh i can put a pro mist filter on this a circular filter you can screw right on here and then you can put your square filters on in here okay they just simply slip in and lock in with these with this uh, pin right there it's, this is super easy to use the tilt the box slips on just make sure it's there we go and I love having the, 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 the top flag, right? The top flag is nice, especially when you're done, you just close it for dust protection or whatnot, but you can also put the cap on, right? Double protection, beautiful. And then we got the, this is the lens mount, like a lens uh, uh, support, okay? Do I got enough room in there or what? Oh, I'm here. There we go. Basically, I just pick up under right there is where I want to be. Yeah. And there you go. You got your lens support now. So now, not only do you got this lens support here, you got your speed booster is attached to the cage as well. So it's a very strong build. Very, very, very sturdy. It's, it's not going anywhere. That's your build. That is a, the complete build right there. So what we'll do is I'll turn it on and I'll show you the menu settings quick and you're ready to go. But yeah, let's get something to look at while we're doing that. All right, so for live streaming guys, you wanna be at ISO 400. 60 frames a second, f1.4. That's your live streaming settings. In-studio setting is also good, but you might want to change your frame rate to like 30, okay? What I do is I shoot Blackmagic RAW, constant quality, Q0, 4K, DCI, all the time. That's the only thing you want to shoot with this camera, okay? That's the only reason why you would want to buy this camera, okay, is to shoot Blackmagic RAW, these settings are the only settings you're ever going to use. Okay, Blackmagic RAW, constant quality, Q0, 4K DCI. You want to use the film when it comes to dynamic range. Uh, film, that gives you 13 stops of dynamic range. And for recording, you want to record to your CFast card. And that's that. For that, for your monitoring, if you check out here for under LCD, turn Zebra on, focus assist on, status text on and you can either set it to codec and resolution or meters i put it to meters and then set your screen brightness to 50 percent moving on to hdmi clean feed on if you're in a live stream from this camera you have to have clean feed on focus assist on and i set the display status text to cinematographer 
for your audio. Oh, no, you know what? There's one more thing I forgot. For both, hey, frame guides, two, four, two to four to one at 50%. And you, for focus assist, put colored lines and focus assist level high. Focus color, I like green. Green's the standard. Zebra levels, 100%. And then your grids, you can, I put thirds, use thirds. Safe area guide, 90%. And that's that. For audio, pretty straightforward. It's set it up as you need it. I'm recording right now to, through my mixer, to, through Audition, uh, right here in the studio to my PC. You can set up an XLR. It's got mini XLR. It's got phantom power. You can do some crazy things with this. It's great. I just showed you the wireless here. It's simple to set up. I'm not getting into it. Set up here, shutter angle. That is important, okay? If you're working with a green screen, set your shutter speed to 50. But for everything else, shutter angle, simple. Um, America, 60 hertz. And then yeah, you can program these custom function buttons up here. So I'll show you those in a second. Okay, I got LUT on one, so you can set up your custom LUTs. This will not bake it into your, uh, into your uh, file, okay? This is just a view it on the screen. This uh, second function is focus peaking, and the third one is grid lines. So simple as that. If we go back into the menu, like I show you, you can set presets and you can load LUT. So I got Leaming LUT is the best for Blackmagic Pocket 4K, and the buttery is pretty good too, but the Leaming LUTs are the best. And that's it for menu. So now, if we bring it over to the tripod, <clears throat> this is the 504 you'll see the Manfrotto right here is the it's the 504 head uh, I can't remember the exact uh, model of legs but you'll you you'll see you, you when you're shopping for the 504 these will come up as suggested this is beautiful nice smooth you can pick your um, tension you can uh, pan and tilt with this bad boy, or this way. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> Dummy. It will stop, but yeah, you, you can pick the strength as well, okay? But yeah, it's just like having a real cinema rig. It's beautiful, right? And like I was saying, with this tilt the box I can put a circle filter and a square filter, and you so you can stack them, which is great, right? Most, uh, most of the time when you're shooting with an Aerie Alexa, you're only using up to two filters. Um, but yeah, this monitor, the Shinobi, is great. It'll, it allows me to take um, false color and uh, like focus peaking and monitoring. I really love the false color for exposure, but you can see my tripod I have set here. This, this is to my PC for live streaming. So I have the Blackmagic uh, Intensity Pro 4K right now capture card. I am upgrading to the Quad HDMI. I, I did buy an Elgato Pro for four inputs, but I honestly didn't like the quality of video, so I took it out and I'm using the Blackmagic and I'm gonna save up and buy the, the Quad HDMI, which gave me four uh, HDMI inputs. But yeah, basically, yeah, just take out, unplug the monitor, plug the, um, this HDMI in for live streaming, and then also I can run dedicated power into the wall as well so I don't have to run the battery if I don't want to okay and the same thing I got another one here <laughs> for the uh, uh, I got a dummy battery for the monitor that plugs into the wall as well but that's the setup guys that's all you'll need that's all you'll ever need for the Blackmagic Pocket 4k <laughs> so yeah make sure if you guys want to see me build the this on the Zhuin Crane which there's some little tricks you might want to see uh, the Zhuin Crane Lab 3 uh, three lab or whatever, then get subscribed to uh, the channel, Stream Pocket, brand new channel. Uh, I have another channel, Construction Cronies. We're coming on to, we just passed 8,000 subscribers over there. Um, so yeah, this is a new channel to demonstrate all the gear that we've built up over the years and uh, to show you how to stream with these cameras and you know shoot with them. They're, it's a beautiful rig, very affordable. I recommend going with the Blackmagic camera um, if you're wanting to get into cinema because it's so easy. It's so straightforward and it's, it's really the best camera to learn on.